Hi students, today let's discuss regarding Otitis Media. So Otitis Media means it is the inflammation of the middle ear. Otitis means infection of ear, ear infection. So media means middle. So Otitis Media means it is an inflammation of the middle ear. So this is a picture showing the inflammation of the middle ear or otitis media. So inflammation and fluid accumulations in the middle ear. So that these stations E2 will be consistent or not. Mean the classification it is very very important. Otitis media is divided into acute separate otitis media and chronic separate otitis media. It is always called as ASOM and CSOM. Okay, so in this session, I will be dealing with only ASOM. So accurate, acute, separative otitis media. So it is an acute inflammation of middle ear by biogenic organisms. A for acute, which is sudden in onset. Separative means, separation means first formation. So it is caused by a biogenic organism. And otitis media is middle ear infection. Okay, so it is common acute infection of the middle ear, which is caused by the biogenic organism. So this is a picture, this is a normal ear, it will not have any fluid, okay. So in the beginning stage, it will be having some fluid, which will be mixed with air and fluid. Then effusion means full of fluid. In the middle ear cavity, it, it uh, always contain air, but when the infection starts, it will be filled with fluid. The etiology. Age, it can occur at all ages, but more common in children. It is mainly due to the small U station 2. So, in the smaller children, there will be higher chances for getting respiratory infection. So, as the U station tube has smaller size, the infections can be spread from the nasal cavity to the middle ear very fast. That's why uh, small children will get middle ear infections very commonly. Sex, it affects both sexes equally. In geographic distribution, it occurs all over the world. There is no particular geographic. Uh, discrimination or particular it is not localized to a particular area socioeconomic group it occurs in lower socioeconomic group so that patients will be having lower immunity so it can activate the disease then this is a picture of eustachian tube comparison this is infant eustachian tube and this is others so the size can be of different size it is very small but it is very when compared with that of infant it is larger in size so the infection rate will be less in case of when comparing with the case of infant. Okay. Then portal of entry of infection. How these infections can be entered into the middle ear, either through the eustachian tube or through the external ear, head injury and blood bone infection. We can see each one in detail. Eustachian tube, it is a common route for getting middle ear infection. The infections in the middle ear reached via the eustachian tube due to the following causes. First is anatomical obstruction caused by adenoids and nasopharyngeal tumors. So if any kinds of benign or malignant tumors in the adenoid or nasopharyngeal region, it can obstruct, obstruct and can lead to the congestion. Okay, the infections such as tonsillitis, rhinitis and sinusitis. Tonsillitis means it's the infection of the tonsils. Rhinitis means it's an inflammation of the nasal mucosae and Sinusitis means it's an inflammation of the sinus cavity. Okay, so first, these infections can be spread to the middle ear through this incision tube. Okay, hygiene, possible blowing of the nose pushes the infection into the ear through the incision tube. So, forceful blowing can also act as a portal of entry to the incision tube. Then, swimming, swimming in the contaminated water, contaminated water, it can also cause middle ear infection. The iatrogenic, due to the Procedures like intranasal or paranasal packing or adenoidectomy. If it is done under not following any aseptic techniques, that can be acted as an activated factor for developing middle ear infection. Then feeding bottle, use a feeding bottle for an infant in the supine position. We should not feed the baby in a supine position because it can lead to an aspiration of this fluid and it will enter into the middle ear and cause infection. Then portal of entry to the external ear. It can be enter or trauma to the eardrum while cleaning the ear or slap on the ear. So while trying to clean the external auditory canal or the external ear, externally this cleaning material can be plugged into the 
deeper layers of the external organs you can add and cause the trauma to be aired. Then head injury like fracture of the temporal bone or skull fracture, it can cause head injury. And there may be leading to medial infection. Then bloodborne infection, it is very uncommon when comparing with other factors. Bloodborne infection is very less. Then predisposing factors. First is reduced vitality, which means the patient's immunity power is reduced. Automatically, patient will get more chances for infection. Then atmospheric pressure, like barrel trauma, occur during flying and driving. The infection reaches the middle ear via the eustachian tube. Any changes in the pressure, which means the pressure will be maintained by the eustachian tube, which will be acting as a connection between the middle ear and nasal pharynx. So, if any change in the pressure, these pressure variations can be affect the station tip and cause injury, and to that, infections can be happened. Then, causative organisms, the main responsible organisms for middle ear infection syndrome, Streptococcus hemolyticus, Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus influenzae, and Pneumococcus. Pathology it includes five stages, very very important. Okay. It is divided into five stages, casual stage, stage of excavation, stage of separation, stage of healing, and stage of complication. We can see each one in detail. First is casual stage. It is otherwise called as stage of condition or stage of tubal occlusion. Characteristic way, occlusion of eustachian tube and condition in the middle ear. Mainly two characteristic features that happen during the casual stage. First is condition and Occlusion. So conditions can be happened in the middle ear through the occlusions of the eustachian tube because the eustachian tube is mainly responsible for maintaining the normal pressure in between the middle ear. Isn't it? So if any conditions that happen in the eustachian tube will be resulted in stage of condition in the middle ear. Then stage of excavation, which means it is otherwise called a stage of pre-separation. Pre-separation means separation of the tubular stage. If tubular occlusion is prolonged, pyogenic organisms in the tympanic cavity causing hyperemia of its lining. Are the tube? Are the eustachian tube completely prolonged diameter occluded diameter? These pyogenic organisms can be entered into the tympanic cavity and causing hyperemia or hyper. Activation of the immune response. Then in, inflammatory X-ray appears in the middle ear and the trunk is pushed laterally. I'm going to X-ray produce a X-ray to the ear from the pressure exerted. Okay. Initially, the X-ray is may coil later, it becomes even. Infection is not a good thing. It is a good thing. It is a stage of X-ray. We can see a hyperemic stage of middle ear. Then stage is separation. Pus in the middle ear. Separation means pus fraction or cavity forming. Pus will be collected in a cavity. That is the word meaning of separation. Okay. Pus in the middle ear collects under tension, stretches the ear drum to the point of rupture. And then a middle ear cavity is complete and pus form to the situation. Middle ear is shared with the tympanic membrane or ear drum. So, other pressure exerted in automatically ear terminal pressure will be last a group rupture in a stage like it. Then X ray starts escaping into the external load trick and I'm going to produce an X ray to external load trick and I'm going to escape the external load trick. I escape this in some way in the perforation of the Timbani membrane. When the Timbani membrane perforation is to save the NASA permission diagram. Okay, then stage of healing. Stage of resolution, it is otherwise called a stage of resolution, which means the symptoms can be resolved or relieved in this stage. Infection begins to resolve. Usually, the infection clears up completely without leaving any symptoms. So, automatically, the antibiotic therapy starts to even proper treatment start to even. The symptoms can be subsided so that the patient will get comfort. Okay, this is stage of resolution. Follows symptom membrane perforation. Here, it can be relieved. There are the features in the coronary stage. Stage of complication. If virulence of the organism is high and resistance of patient poor, resolutions may not take place. And either infected infective organs then active active uh good active outweigh, otherwise then a patient in the withdrawal infection will prolong a sub. 
may lead to mastoiditis, labyrinthitis, and extraordinary abscess. It is the involvement of intraocular ear. Okay, a labyrinthitis means it is an inflammation of inner ear. Because these infections can be extended into the inner ear and cause infection. Okay. Then clinical features, it can be discussed under two headings. That is, catarrhal stage and stage of separation. Clinical features, signs are good. Eardrum gets retracted. Because retracted eardrum means it will deeply, it will go deeply in this and more than the anatomical position. The anatomical position is called deep fighter, in the fighter, demand membrane bone. That is the idea of the in associated X-ray production. Okay. And congestion. Drum becomes congested and may present as cap will appear. The congestion is complicated. The X-ray production is done, first production is done. Um, it will be congested out. The light reflex, due to edema of the drum, the light reflex is lost. Now, automatically, light reflex and light rays and transmit chamber, other Namka ear drum will reflect in the Ghana. Reflect it because there will be normal, healthy ear, there will be no disturbance or no edema. So, if the patient is infected with middle ear infection, the ear drum will be congested and inflamed so that the ear light rays cannot be passed into it and this can be lost. Symptoms include fullness in the ear, ear pain, nostalgia, deafness due to the uh, production of fluid. There will be no communication or conduction system. Conduction is not available. That is why the transmission is obstructed down so that the patient will be getting deafness. Then tinnitus, autophony, which means spoken words on the patient echo in his ear. That is why the patient is echo. Like you know, but then constitutional symptoms like the mental infection for the name, fever in the malaise symptoms of patient and answer. This is a picture of how light reflex can be seen. Okay, what is popular light reflex for seeing one in my membrane normally perforations on the level light reflex. So if it is edema for infant, it cannot be seen. So it is lost. This is autalgia or ear ache. Then the stage is exudation, all symptoms become more severe. Come on, cause should do higher stage and other good symptoms of autology and put a ear discharge cycle and put a middle stage. Ear then starts bulging and become convex. Come on, put the lens production of the middle, and the tension is good above the end of bulge out no convex shape like you. Stage of separation from perforates and pulse starts going up. Or the bulging stage is exudation in the three stages of separation rather, the perforation will get on the root to the Increased tension by this pulse production. Then pain and constant symptoms lessen at this stage. The escape of fear is such. And the perforation is not just fluid, external ear like a problem. Automatically, patient will cause a relief on them. Because our external ear like a fluid shift in another one, cause a relief for another condition, cause another relief in another one. Autoria will be there. Then perforation of ear. Show slight house sign. The bilateral discharge is the result of excitement and pressure exuding out, synchronized with each artery dilatation caused by the heartbeat. Rather, bilateral discharge will be done. Artery pulse is synchronized with the patient to get the discharge. It is another feature. Okay. Then how we can identify or oh, what are the diagnostic tests that we can perform to rule out this autitis, acute autitis in India. In the history collection, we can collect the history regarding whether the patient had any complaints of tonsillitis, tonsillitis in that and then get adenoiditis in that and then the carrying of the yeah. then patient and then um, swimming, uh, the damage to our swimming uh, habit and then the carrying of the history collection, as well as we can collect history regarding the complaints or or clinical features, autoria, ear pain, hearing loss, or tinnitus sensation. Test of hearing we can done, that is uh, tuning cord test, which means Weber and retina test, it will reveal connective deafness. Audiometry, which will also show connective deafness, and radiography, which shows. In the first three stages, the radiographs of the master shows no change. Current stage of Separation where no change. I reckon stages begin in the infection inverse the master. Kind of or complication stage like bone but I reckon stages in a very exile regulating a labor and jump. So catarrhal master I think some of the infections spread down some. If the patient is infected with catarrhal mastoiditis, 
which means extension of this middleware infection to the mastoid. Extension of crowding of hair cells in the mastoid. That is empyema stage. Like, and the mastoid is discussed in the mastoid. The pathology is discussed in the empyema of mastoid. Okay. So, our stage is like crowding hair. Complete hair cells will be accumulated with pus. Bacteriological examinations will help to reveal the presence of positive organism. Okay, this is a picture of a healthy eardrum or healthy ear, and this is a picture of infected middle ear. You can see that there will be color changes, region spots formation, as well as the hyperemia of middle ear. Then the treatment. Treatment can be discussed under three headings: that is, local treatment, systemic treatment, and surgical management. Local treatment can be done either through uh, installing the ear drops or by performing the oral donation. Ear drop, it can be installed before perforation and after perforation. Before perforation, the ultimate aim to install the ear drop before the perforation is to relieve the pain. Because perforation is the patient of the pain and the due to the congestion of the middle ear. So, other relieves the pain in the ear drop. Glycerin carbolic ear drop can be installed. It will reduce the pain by destroying the superficial nerve endings on the external surface of the trunk. Ear drum in the external surface will nerve endings will destroy the glycerin carbolic ear drop. So, that ear nerve endings activate down the more than patient pain. So, that nerve endings will destroy the pain automatically patient will get complete relief from the pain. And warm oil can be applied as a household remedy which also reduces the pain by the homage. Okay. Then after perforation, after perforation, we will to relieve the complications. So, if antibiotic effect changes, we will have to use the treatment of the infection and subsidy. Antibiotic ear drugs can, can be contained chloramphenicol, tetracycline, neomycin, and chondamycin. In, along with antibiotic ear drugs, we can administer ciprofloxacin and nortofloxacin as well as spirit, boric acid, boric drugs are also useful. Then what is oral or ear toilet? Oral, it is otherwise called as ear toilet, which is nothing but, it is mainly, we are trying to keep the ear cavity as dry. If you have ear cavity dry, so water should be prevented from entering the ear or keeping the ear as dry. Okay. Ear discharge may be mopped with cotton buds and or maybe sucked on. Ear discharge will not be able to do this. And then you will have cotton buds which will be absorbed. Okay, that is ear toilet. In systemic management, it can be managed with antibiotics, analgesics and decongestants. Antibiotics, the first degree of antibiotics can be used to relieve the symptoms of acute otitis needed in good ambicillin. It should be given at the dose of 50 mg per kg per day in four divided doses and tamoxifen also can be given at the dose of 40 mg per kg per day in three divided doses which are very much effective if it is used in the initial stages. If, suppose if the patient is allergic to this penicillin, we can manage with cefaprof, crotinazole or erythromycin. Antibiotic therapy should be continued minimum of 10 days and until the patient gets normal hearing ability. Hearing ability normally is not the antibiotic treatment continues to at least 10 days. Then decongestant. Nasal decongestants, oral nasal decongestants, and systemic decongestants can be used. Nasal decongestants, mainly epidural nasal drops can be used. 1 percentage in adults and 0.5 percentage in children. Or oxymetazole also can be used to relieve the eustachian edema. Eustachian tube in the condition of the automatically at exert in the pressure. So that, that is the aim of using nasal decongestants. And suppose if the patient is not cooperative, which means in case of small children, we can use oral nasal decongestant. It can be given example pseudo epidrin 30 mg twice daily or combination of decongestant and antihistamine. We will the symptoms. Then systemic decongestants include phenylephrine, decongestant mastered middle ear cavity and insertion to account with the nasal cavity. So these are the main decongestant. Nasal decongestant, oral nasal decongestant and systemic decongestant. Next is the main management, that is surgical management of acute otitis media. First is syringe otomy. Otomy means we are making a incision or a hole. Meringe means ear drum or tympanic membrane, which means we are trying to make an incision in the tympanic membrane. So meringe otomy is a procedure in which ear drum is incised to drain the middle ear cavity. If the middle ear is complete, it is fluid and it is passed. 
അതിനെ ഡ്രെയിൻ ഔട്ട് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ മിഡിഞ്ചു ടെമിജു വിച്ച് മീൻസ് വിയർ ട്രൈങ് ടു ഇൻസൈഡ് ദ ഇയർ ഡ്രാം the common indications of uh, the sudden immune stage effects reaction infant intracranial in complications acute otitis media secretory otitis media hemorrhage and bacterial acute otitis media so in the months of acute otitis media primary management ana original thing okay so this is a picture of infected media kanda infected with three year level where in first and first forming throat circulate again so that this incision to be congested or occluded so number of scalpel you see that ear drum number incise and this is ear drum and incise will be through the drain out ear okay a blockage not a sign the pre medications can be given to before meningotomy include atropine to prevent the vessel backlash and cardiac arrest anesthesia general anesthesia it is done under general anesthesia preparation patient lies in supine position with her turned to the opposite side of the affected ear the procedure first is sterilization the external auditory canal is sterilized with methylated spirit that is the beginning stage of this meningotomy after sterilizing we should maintain or make a j-shaped incision in the entire posterior inferior quadrant midway between the ampo and the annulus ampo means it's a part of the tympanic membrane okay so uh, that is anatomical position of making the incision after the drainage a strip of gauze is inserted in the ear for drainage for next 24 to 40 hours the air shape incision and that incision we will drain out the ear for which the incision will be gauze keep it for two days okay this is a picture of tympanic membrane perforations and slit is made in the ear and the fluid automatically in the remove this is the fluid level post operatively the strip of gauze is removed after 2 days 48 hours the initiation of the gauze removal is done antibiotics analgesics be consistent and antibiotic ear drops are given our gauze removal is done in the post operative period the patient infection correct so infection risk for again we can manage with antibiotics pain can be managed with analgesics be consistent and antibiotic ear drops can be used okay complications cardiac arrest due to the uh, use of anesthetic medication sometimes patient may get cardiac arrest and injury could be successfully caused by infection while trying to puncture the tympanic membrane sometimes accidental injury could happen to this deep structures meningeal puncture it is puncturing the eardrum with a long thick incision needle and aspirating the middle ear and uh, meningeal puncture i mean we are just trying to make a puncture or a prick alle wow oru meningeal puncture vechina oru injection needle or a prick form cheyyo adinu shesham avana drain out cheyyo aspirate cheyyo adu kaalam okay matra drain out cheyyo kaalam ivarnu meningeal puncture ningal idu chelappo differentiation aayittu cheyyanga saadhu ulla questions aanu meningeal tammi with meningeal puncture okay appo adana difference manasilaakka this can be done without anesthesia after atropination but meningeal tammi should be done under general anesthesia okay then special forms of acute otitis in the there are many many types of otitis media first is acute necrotizing necrotizing otitis media it is often seen in children suffering from measles influenza causative or dancing is beta hemolytic structure okay there is rapid destruction of whole ear drum with profuse otorrhea acute necrotizing varnale it is necrotization or necrotizing hmm? necrot types tangible changes are tangible due to the decreased blood supply okay so it is very common in the children the main organs responsible for acute necrotizing necrotizing otitis media is beta hemolytic structure complex then otitis media with effusion effusion means fluid accumulation okay it is otherwise called as serous otitis media or secretory otitis media or gloom ear these are the synonyms of otitis media with effusion it is an insidious onset or condition characterized by accumulation of non pulmonary effusion in the middle area tract commonly seen in school going children it is the pratyagara nu parayum non pulmonary fluid accumulation and the first time it will happen okay then aero otitis media or otitis varroa trauma it is non separate condition resulting from fever of eustachian tube to maintain middle ear pressure at ambient atmospheric level മിഡിൽ ഇയർ നോർമൽ പ്രഷർ മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന യൂസ്റ്റേഷൻ ട്യൂബിന്റെ പ്രസൻസിലാണ് ഇഫ് ദി യൂസ്റ്റേഷൻ ട്യൂബ് ഇസ് കൺസിസ്റ്റഡ് ഇറ്റ് കൻ നോട്ട് മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ നോർമൽ പ്രഷർ ഇൻ ദി മിഡിൽ ഇയർ ക്യാവിറ്റി സോ ഇറ്റ് കൻ ആക്ട് എസ് എ ബാരോട്രോമ ആൻഡ് ലീഡിങ് ടു എൻ എയറോ ഓട്ടൈറ്റിസ് മീഡിയ ഓക്കെ ദെൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ പിക്ചർ ഓഫ് സെക്രട്ടറി ഓട്ടൈറ്റിസ് മീഡിയ 
Okay, so in this session, we had seen regarding what is bronchitis in okay, its main classification that is acute and chronic. Here is a section of acute and acute discuss here. You know, this stage is, this stage is very, very important. Huh? Then clinical features, diagnostic evaluations, and management. Local systemic and surgical management. Surgical management is important. That is, you know, when you have a story, you can show the right story, you can make a depreciation, differentiate the age of all of us. You can expect it. Okay, so if you have any doubt, you can. Call me or you can ask me at any time. Okay, thank you.